Now, one very useful tool so far has been traced together. And as of today, we have almost 1.8 million people who have downloaded and acti activated this app. 1.8 million in our context means about one quarter of our population. And this, I must stress, has been on a voluntary basis. So what I'm saying is that 25% is good, but it is not good enough. And we need to re raise that number significantly. One barrier that we have had to increasing that number is the fact that not everyone has a smartphone or a smartphone that works effectively enough to supply all the data that we need. So that's why we took a decision to expand the Trace Together program to include a device, a device which we are going to call Trace Together Token. The device will operate and function exactly the same way Trace Together on a smartphone does. So here's where I need to emphasize and repeatedly emphasize. It is not a tracking device. It is not an electronic tag, as some internet commentaries have fretted about. In particular, and here to be technical, there is no GPS chip on the device. There isn't even any internet or mobile telephony connectivity. And the next thing which I need to emphasize again to come back to Trace Together and how it works is that the data that Trace Together, both on the phone as well as on the device, captures is only Bluetooth proximity data. And that data never leaves the device or the phone. It is encrypted. It is stored for up to 25 days and automatically deleted. The only time the data leaves the phone or the device is in the unlikely event that you are diagnosed with COVID-19. One other point which has arisen is about data protection. Even the finite silos of data that are uploaded are protected by the public sector data security recommendations. The review committee will continue to oversee this and oversee this very tightly. All the officers involved are covered by the Official Secrets Act. And we will continue to audit and make sure that no data leakage occurs. Ultimately, the real test of the pudding is whether we can shorten the time from identification of a patient or close contact to isolation, bring down the effective reproduction number of this epidemic, and also reassure people that we are getting the balance right between protecting public health and protecting personal privacy.